Welcome back to the Morning Wrap. May is Celiac Awareness Month, and it's a disease that's estimated to impact one in 100 people worldwide, but only about 30% are properly diagnosed. So here to tell us more about available treatments, what you can do, we have Dr. Suhail Salem here with me right now. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. So I want to just dive in, first of all, what this disease is exactly and what it does to someone's body. All right, well, it's a great question. It is an autoimmune disease, which means that your body's immune system has been triggered to attack part of your own body. And the trigger for that, mo most people are familiar with, is gluten. And so what happens is gluten and its byproducts of digestion get taken up by your small intestine, presented to your immune system. Your immune system responds as though this could harm your body and in the process damages your small intestine. Thank you for for breaking that down for me. Sure. I, I just, I feel like, I, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like a lot of people are gluten intolerant. And um, it seems like we are just hearing more and more about people being diagnosed with celiac disease in general. What are some of the obstacles that they have to deal with and how, what ways can they combat some of the daily struggles? Well, uh, I mean, the, the treatment for celiac disease mm -hmm. basically involves being on a gluten-free diet and um, it's just as easy as that it's as, it's as easy and as hard as that I would say because uh, the good thing is you don't have to take any drugs there's no pharmaceuticals for it the disease pretty much goes away in both in terms of the symptoms and the consequences of the disease if you are able to avoid gluten and nowadays we have so many more options grocery stores and restaurants both uh, mm -hmm. present their foods as being gluten-free. It's not perfect yet, but uh, a lot more uh, options than we used to have. What are some of the, I guess you mentioned consequences, um, but how can someone identify, okay, I think I have celiac disease. Like, what are some of the, the things that pop up that will well, let you know? So first of all, you might suspect it based on symptoms. So mm -hmm. diarrhea, abdominal pain, bloating, as well as uh, nutritional deficiencies or weight loss. Uh, but talk to your doctor about it. We have very good testing for it. There's blood testing that can identify the uh, antibodies associated with celiac disease. We have genetic testing that can determine if you're genetically predisposed to have celiac mm -hmm. disease. And then we have uh, endoscopy with biopsies of the small intestine, which helps clinch the diagnosis as well. What are some of the long-term consequences if you do not get a diagnosis? I mean, I know, we said that earlier that a lot of people don't even realize that they have it or they're not getting diagnosed. So what, what, if for some reason they went years and years and years, let's just say without proper diagnosis, what could happen? Well, uh, the most common things would be chronic symptoms, mm -hmm. diarrhea, uh, malnutrition, nutritional deficiencies. Um, but also in the most severe cases, some people are more prone to certain types of lymphomas that can affect the intestinal tract. That's quite rare, but mm -hmm. that is maybe in the worst case scenario. What are some of the things that you'd like people to know about maybe possible misconceptions or ways that they can help other people possibly show some support? I think, um, I think people should understand how serious this condition is. I mean, every time these people consume gluten, their body is developing an inflammatory reaction against their intestine. I think sometimes people don't take it as seriously. Um, I think if you're living in the same household as somebody with celiac disease, you can take steps to um, prevent cross-contamination of foods, keep uh, dishes and utensils in separate cupboards that are gluten-free, uh, clean home appliances like microwaves in between use because cross-contamination is a significant contributor to uh, ongoing symptoms and um, inflammation. I've learned so much today. Thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it.